keeping our solar system from, from escaping from the galaxy. Because it's that black, it's that dark matter halo. Around the galaxy. Around the galaxy. In fact, we're in it. We're in right. that field. Right. It's extending out to us. And we're in that field. And that's keeping us... That's keeping us, it's because of what it calls flat stellar rotation curves, if you look on, if you do Google. And that's explained because we are living, we are living in a kind of cloud, in a virtual plasma. You may call it a virtual plasma of electron positive and pairs, dark matter. We're living there. Now there's also something called... So this is what really causes, this is what keeps galaxies together then. This is what keeps the stars in the galaxy, that's what keeps the, the stars and the solar system And the solar system. If there are extrasolar planets around those stars, that's what keeps it all, that's what binds it together. Otherwise it would be unstable and just fly apart out into intergalactic space. So in, in, in the intergalactic areas, between the galaxies, this is the the the, the rapid expansion is is, is predominant. Yeah, well, yeah. So it's actually fairly complicated, and I'm not an expert in that field. But you know, uh, what it is, if you look, okay, if you actually look at the the uh, the way the dark energy and the dark matter the, uh, is distributed, it almost it looks it almost looks like a, a living cell. I mean, it looks almost biological. It looks like the inside of a you know all these filamentary structures and the uh, ordinary matters in these filamentary structures, and uh, there's these big voids and but it's complicated this is the, I don't want to get into detail because I'm not an expert in that but this is like well-known standard textbook stuff that uh, you know that, that is taught but uh, the, but what it is it's the small-scale clumping of the exotic vacuum where the fermion antifermion pairs dominate to cause an attractive zero point induced gravity and on the large scale we have the virtual light the virtual bosons causing the acceleration expansion universe and that's kind of the picture it's a very kind of pretty picture that's emerging uh, so that's, you know, that's, uh, that's developing. And also, as I say, mathematically, I can show a very deep connection between the strong uh, gluon, there are eight gluons, the eight gluon superconducting coherent fields that are causing the strong force holding matter together at the, at the, the uh, smallest level and gravity itself. There's a, there's a close connection. Okay, but now let's get to the hologram. We have to get to the hologram. We have to get to the omega point of Teilhard de Chardin. And, uh, remember, explain explain that. Yeah, and, and we have to get to remember what Jesus Christ says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, right? There's a, we have to get to something called the Wheel of Feynman Theory. Back in 1940, when, uh, when uh, Feynman had just uh, gotten his uh, bachelor's degree from MIT and went to work with John Wheeler at Princeton, right before World War II began, they, of course, uh, they went to uh, uh, Feynman, wound up in Manhattan Project in, in Los Alamos, and Wheeler had to go do some other stuff, at, I think at Oak Ridge, on uh, Fission. But in any case, but they were uh, playing around with ideas, and they got this idea, they were trying to understand what's called the self-energy electron. There are problems that if the electron is a point particle, then uh, when you kind of compute the energy of the, uh, of the electron itself and the energy of the... Uh, the electromagnetic field around the electron itself, if it's really a point particle, that self-energy electron is infinite. Okay, And that's no good. You don't want infinities in physics. And so we're trying to solve that problem. And, uh, and the point is, if you, say, if you think of the electron as a little thin shell of charge, like a classical, you know, like a, like a classical ball, like Newton would think of it, uh, the problem is you have problems with special relativity. The special relativity doesn't quite work the way you, you, you think you want it to work. And so the special relativity breaks down, so you're in a dilemma. And uh, one of the uh, early ideas that Feynman had was to eliminate what's called the, the self-action, the, 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 uh, the, the action of the electron on itself. He wanted to eliminate that. And one way to eliminate that is because when you look at the theory of electromagnetic waves, it turns out mathematically, in Maxwell's theory, electromagnetic, the free electromagnetic field, waves can move to the future, in the ordinary way, the way we think waves, you have a point charge and it emits an electromagnetic wave. So it's like a spherical, think of a point spherical wave expanding forward in time, forward in time. That's called a retarded wave. But there's also there's a perfectly, there's what's called the time reverse solution where the electron uh, uh, emits electromagnetic waves that are expanding backward, backward in time. There's what's called the future light cone and the past light cone. You have waves going both ways. That's called the advanced wave. Okay. And there's no reason, uh, in terms of pure electromagnetic field theory, why you should not have both kinds of waves. All right? So there was that. Now, we, but we know from thermodynamics that things tend, you know, we age in one direction. There's, that's called the arrow of time problem, irreversibility. So there's that whole problem. 
but that's like a different level of physics it's called statistical physics and that's still a problem today um, all right so they're thinking about this and <clears throat> here's what they show now it gets very very interesting because we have time travel back from the future time travel comes in back in 1940 at Princeton okay with Wheeler and Feynman okay with great I mean Wheeler you know, was one of the inventors with Niels Bohr of nuclear fission, of the theory of nuclear fission. I mean, these are, you know, the top, top minds of the century, you know, thinking along these lines, backwards in time stuff. So what they found, you get what's called like a self-consistent loop in time. Suppose you have an electron in the past that emits light, okay, and then the light is absorbed by some other electron in the future. All right. So what happens is that the future absorber the future absorber sends an advanced signal back in time that arrives at the electron just at the very moment when the electron's emitting the wave to begin with. So it's all so kind it's of a loop. bootstrap. It's, it's a, a bootstrap. loop in time. It's a closed loop in time. Okay? It's like those time travel paradoxes. You may have seen Twilight Zone where some guy, some physicist, gets, you know, writes a, a book about how to do time travel. And the reason he's able to write the book is because the you know, time traveler came back from the future, gave him the gave him the, uh, the information, he wrote it down, but that's the very information that brings it back. So the idea creates itself. You have what's called self-creation of ideas, okay? And it's self-consistent. And it's globally self-consistent. This is called a paradox by people who don't really think very deeply about this. They say this is paradoxical. Well, it's not a paradox at all. In fact, there is a, uh, <laughs> this is how our consciousness works. See, that's a whole other story. That's the, and there's now a, a young lady in the University of Rome, and Antonia, Antonia Vanini, Antonia Vanini, who's now a, a, published a, a theory of consciousness based on this wheel of Feynman idea. And actually, Fred Allen Wolf actually wrote a book. Uh, Fred Allen Wolf and I were discussing these ideas back in San Diego State back in the late 60s, in the early 70s. You know, uh, We were like playing around, because I was really into wheel of Feynman back then. When I, uh, Fred was an associate professor. Uh, at Sanders, so I was an assistant professor, and we were like, uh, you know, the two crazies of the physics department there, and we were talking about all these crazy ideas. And, and Fred wrote a book, I think, in 1980 called Star Wave, which he develops this idea too. And uh, then, then since that time, uh, Roger Penrose, in his popular books, uh, uh, talked about what are called pre spons that based on Benjamin Lippitt's experiments at uh, University of California, San Francisco, where there's evidence that the mind kind of looks into the future by a half second, gets information in the future before it acts. And uh, if you read Roger Penrose's book, The Emperor's New Mind and Shadows of the Mind, Penrose goes into a lot of well, detail Well, how would it do this. that unless it was getting uh, well, it's advanced? It's getting it's advanced, advanced, advanced potential of, yeah, it's feedback. Advanced, it's a wheel of Feynman thing, although uh, Penrose isn't explicit how it might work, but it's basically that idea. Um, and then, uh, so besides Benjamin Libet getting some experimental evidence with brain patients back, God knows when, in the 60s, uh, at the University of California Medical School here, then uh, a guy named uh, Dick Berman, uh, Dick Bierman, a uh, professor uh, of experimental psychology in Holland, uh, want, thought the idea was crazy and, and w tried to disprove it, and he confirmed it. And if you go on the Google and Dick Bierman, you'll see all kinds of pre-sponse papers there. So, I mean, there's evidence for this. Uh, and then uh, uh, Brian Josephson came out with a paper how biological systems can utilize maybe these advanced effects with, I think, Fotina Pellicchetti, a, a Greek uh, lady scientist was working with Brian at the time. But then, uh, and Anthony Valentini, uh, the Italians are really up on this, Anthony Valentini has since done... Uh, 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 took a course with Brian, I think, at Cambridge, and also was into David Bohm's theory. And uh, Valentini has shown how ordinary quantum mechanics has to be...